Hello. Uh, okay, what we're going to do today is I'm going to answer a couple of questions that are in the comments section because um, I feel like they deserve uh, some answers. All right, so I'm going to do, I took a bunch of screenshots. I'm just going to go through them and uh, get right to the point. All right, what's this first one? Uh, so, what the heck? Oh, there we go. Uh, Greg asks, uh, no, Greg, Garo. Hey, I want to start digital painting. What tools do you recommend for beginners? By the way, I'm a big fan. Thank you. Uh, I would recommend, honestly, I, I can only recommend Wacom products right now. I mean, I tried uh, the Artist Tool, but I think it's a bit expensive for beginners. Um, you know, Wacom has a bunch of other products like the Bamboo. They're pretty cheap and very introductory. Uh, my first tablet was a, I think a four by five, a really tiny tablet. It was an Intuos um, way back in the day, but it, you know, anything that lets you draw directly on the screen. Um, next, All right, Amy Yang asks, um, I have been reading some current ImagineFX issues, and what caught my interest recently is taking life drawing gestures or portraits and turning that into cool fantasy concepts. And I would like to see your spin on that. Uh, yeah, that's a really great idea. I think everybody should, you know, uh, give that a shot because if we try to <coughs> invent everything, you know, when we do an illustration or a drawing, um, it can be really daunting, but if you do a, a drawing or a sketch from life, whether it's, I don't know, a group of uh, plants or uh, people sitting, it's easy to kind of use that as, as a reference and then and turn that into something more fantastical, like uh, a scene with, um, I don't know, fantasy elements or sci-fi, it doesn't matter, but allowing yourself to draw from reality is a great thing. <clears throat> All right, depressed Pepe. <laughs> is there a liquify mode in Clip Studio Paint? I don't know. Honestly, again, uh, Photoshop is the only program that I've really worked with. I mean, I've used Painter, but I have not tried Clip Studio Paint yet or Manga Studio or anything really um, for now. Yeah, so I don't know. Uh, Donnie Goo asks, do you paint with a mouse or touch screen pen? Now... <laughs> I use a Wacom tablet, so I'm still I'm using a pen, but I'm not drawing directly on the screen. Um, but I do know that Craig Mullins, when he first started painting digitally, he was using a mouse, so it is possible, and he's amazing. So there's that. Uh, Daddy Guy asks, um, my stupidly huge and impossible goal is to be a professional artist that can work in game studios in one year. It's kind of stupid, right? How realistic is it? Is it even possible? Um, well, dude, uh, it depends on what your skill level is. If you're starting and for the first time drawing and learning all this stuff, I got a text. Um, I don't think it's possible. I mean, maybe if you're just really, really good at learning, um, but it really depends on your portfolio. And if you, have a bunch of mileage ahead of time then you might have a chance but but really I think if you're if you're starting out um, you'd have to really really push it um, and don't don't be uh, disheartened if you can't and don't be disheartened if you fail because failure is part of the process that's how we uh, get better at things all right next ghost 59 of all says I have a motivate ah, stop texting me. He says, I have a motivation problem. I can't draw for too long anymore. Maybe I should hang up the tile. Um, motivation is a big one. Um, and it's often like when we get in an art block or we're stuck and we don't know what to do. Um, it, it is good to take a break every once in a while. I think, you know, being able to walk away and taking a walk outside and spending a couple days not thinking about art not doing art not thinking about the audience not thinking about people perceiving your work um, not thinking about your skill level kind of just turning your brain off for a little bit but then returning to it it will be uh, a fresh uh, experience all right you pina you pina oh. asks uh did you paint with a limited color palette uh, this is a question about the oil paintings that I had and uh, 
my old artwork tour. Um, yeah, I, I suppose it was a limited palette. It was um, mostly the earth colors with, so that's like the burnt umber, burnt sienna, uh, yellow ochre, crimson, alizarin crimson, um, what's the blue, ultramarine blue, um, but nothing too crazy. And so it was a lot of mixing. A lot of my understanding of color came from mixing actual real oil paints. <clears throat> Carl Ricardo asks, How do you stay motivated knowing there are amazing artists out there? I want to be a concept artist, but then I look at others' work and I just feel demotivated. Any advice? So much like the previous advice I just gave, I'd say walk away, you know? Um... It, it's hard to lose motivation when you're working on a piece and you go online you know let's say you spent like an hour on something and you go online and you see this beautiful painting or this beautiful sheet of uh, character designs or something um, and you're like well crap I suck you know I feel that all the time um, I'd say spend some time away you know don't look at that art you know have a goal collect your reference and stop looking at other people's work and then kind of isolate yourself to make that project and, and do that artwork without anybody um, without looking at anybody other, uh, else's work um, because you know the point of a concept artist is to communicate an idea it's not about being better than everyone else at rendering something or designing something I mean I guess design is a big one but uh, everybody has an idea to offer and it's not always the most highly rendered most beautiful artwork that is um, conducive to a project so you know keep that in mind how old are you when you you made those oil portraits um so i must have been 18 or 19 because i remember starting right after high school just painting those uh, in my basement um hap dude says what is the goal what is your goal of not telling people what kind of tablet you are using? Dude, what are you talking about? I've mentioned multiple times that I use a Wacom Intuos Pro Medium, so I'm not trying to hide anything, bro. <laughs> uh, Tane Dongade, Dongade, whatever. Hey, Ahmed, I want to buy an art tablet, but I want an, in an, in an inexpensive one. Which one should I buy? Please guide me on this. Again, so I take a look at um, the different Wacom products and uh I, you know the introductory products are really good for beginners like the bamboo um and then the intuo series i think there's a new intuos that's uh not as high end as the intuos pro but uh still is a a, a good option but i think what those lack are uh pen tilt and pen rotate pen rotation which is really big for me i like to rotate certain brushes and kind of aim them in a different direction and uh those those other versions don't have those um mary asks hey ahmed for photo studies like this and this was referring the the peaky blinders episode are you color picking the palette from the reference or just going off what on what looks right this looks awesome thank you um no i wasn't color picking from that i just kind of guessed okay like this part is going to be uh blue and that part's going to be orange and then kind of laying down a color to see if it's close and if it's not just adjust it whether it's going to be warmer or cooler and I can probably bet that if you were to color pick my painting compared to the reference it probably isn't really that close but I can sort of trick you know uh, the colors to kind of feel right you know it doesn't have to be exact there's really no rule that says it has to be exactly like the reference in fact I like to push the colors because that um, you know makes it more impressionistic dynamic illustrative all right uh kabir vermin asks maybe a weird question here but why do you sometimes flip the picture and continue drawing does it make it easier for your hand does it just let you see things with fresh eyes and notice mistakes so yeah i mean all of that uh i mean i don't know if it's easier for my hand because i'm still using my right hand um but it does let you see things from a fresh eye with a fresh eye and you do notice mistakes better especially dealing with symmetry um, because our when we draw naturally we have a bias towards one way and um, when you flip it you can kind of tell which way everything is leaning and you can kind of correct that if you so choose all right hap dude you again 
You seem to have a good life. How can you create without even being exposed to frustration or hunger? <sighs> what? <laughs> Dude. Um, so maybe if, it, well, if you've watched my videos and seen my, you know, art or whatever, obviously I'm, I'm not really highlighting any, um, you know, bad parts of my life. But I mean, like I go through a lot of things too. I'm not you know, living a happy, perfect life, is anybody, really? We're all going through um, struggles. We're all trying to uh, kind of make our way on this planet for now. You know, maybe we'll move on Mars. But, uh, you know, it, it's not... Art isn't about being frustrated or hungry or, or miserable all the time. You know, there's happy people that can create things. Um, and uh, for most of the part, yeah, I am, I am a happy dude, you know. I've kind of established, um, or I've acknowledged the things that bring me down and sort of uh, tackled them head on um, through introspection and figuring things out like of, of my past. And from that, I've been able to uh, eliminate most sadness or any depression that I might have had. Um, but again, like happy people can make art. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Um, all right, next. Kalvich asks, how do you draw without perspective lines and eye line, cone of vision, picture plane, and measuring? Is there a method? Uh, I think this is referring to one of the videos I had when I was drawing perspective lines by eye, eyeballing it. Um, what I would recommend is to uh, have a do a lot of practice. So understand how perspective works and you can draw a horizon line and then you draw vanishing points and the more your hand gets used to drawing towards those points the more you can get a feel and guess where a vanishing point should be and then you can also do it by really close vanishing points and really distant vanishing points meaning far apart from each other on that horizon line um, and the further they are apart the more parallel um, the lines will be, I think. No, parallel lines will happen if you're doing uh, an isometric drawing. But basically, um, just getting a, a feel for it by practice. So it's a lot of mileage in actually drawing over those lines um, and, and towards vanishing points. And uh, the cone of vision changes if you bring those uh, vanishing points closer together. And it all depends on if you're doing two point perspective, three perspective, three point perspective, or one. Um, but again, it's it. It comes with mileage. Uh, Mariana Real asks, uh, I was wondering if you could talk about art stealing. What's like when someone steals your work or have strong and obvious influence of it but won't quote you? I know it might be a bit silly and it's something that one as an artist shouldn't be bothered about, but I've just had that experience a few weeks ago and it was quite unpleasant since it was from someone who I've met in a university and we ended up working together. I know this happens a lot, but it'd be awesome if you could talk about the topic for us who have not that much experience as you do, etc. Um, I have dealt with this before. Um, you know, I, I've learned, of course it's annoying, you know, having gone to, I was in art school, I was at Art Center, and there were certain people, I'm not going to mention any names, who often would kind of just sit around and wait for me to do something and they sort of copied it like come on dude <laughs> uh, and they still do it you know who you are um, and so I, I've i come to just accept the fact that it's going to happen I can't just sit there and call them out and I don't really want credit for anything because I myself copy um, other artists I've studied Lion Decker I've studied Sargent and sure they're dead but like I'm still borrowing so I'm not completely original and if somebody kind of starts off by you know using you or your work as a starting point and sort of part of the part of the game you know um, so I wouldn't be too hurt by it but in, instead try to you know see where everybody else is going and then you know go the opposite way that kind of thing um, but it, you know it is it is annoying and it takes time to get over it I have still I still get annoyed um, but you know, being on YouTube and, and, and making all these videos and putting art out there, you know, it's it's bound to happen. Um, but I'm not upset, by the way, if you're, because, you know, some people have sent me their their drawings and their studies of my work, and I, it's cool, I don't mind that. Um, what I don't like is when, you know, 
it's almost a one-to-one -one copy and they're passing it off as if it's their own that's super annoying um anyway next castrolo asks dude how did you do the concepts that you sent to art center did you paint over photos i mean i just don't understand it can be that good before art school the oil paintings are amazing but i still can't figure out how you went about them the digital paint uh so i don't remember so this is in the old artwork tour video um i don't think i let's see so i had a, my a lot of mileage you know painting digitally and with oils so i kind of had an idea of, of value placement and i i must have actually i do remember so i drew them out um on paper and i scanned things in um and then i did underlay some photos but i didn't keep them so they're not it, like the reason i put the photos under there is to have noise and just kind of information and color for me to kind of push around and match my drawing uh, so I didn't sit there and, and, and come up with all of the the colors and the lighting and the content, but rather I put information below my drawing um, and kind of made it fit my drawing. Um, this was a, an email. So, quick question. Doing color key practice, is it, is it essential to learn how to color with speed? Sometimes I would get disheartened because I paint so slow that it takes hours to be done with a pick. Uh, thanks for your question. And my answer to that is no. It's, I, actually, I emailed you back, but I'll answer this for anybody else that's listening. Um, when you're practicing color or anything like perspective, speed doesn't really matter at that point because you're focused on understanding the concepts of color, right? Um, and if you're doing a color study of color keys, like take your time so that you truly understand um, everything that you're studying. Because if you think you're supposed to do a, a million, you know, movie studies to understand color all in like 10 minutes, like, dude, you're not going to learn very much. You'll get fast at doing that. But if your intent is to draw or to understand color or perspective or figures or pro like, you know, don't worry about speed. Once you've understood it at a slow rate, and if you're interested in making your your work faster, then yeah, you can uh, start doing timed studies so that you do get faster. But I think initially, definitely, you know, don't worry about speed. Anyway, that's all the time I have for today to ask, answer questions. And I uh, hope you enjoyed. I hope you uh, found some value in, in the content that was given today. Um, I hope you're all enjoying E3 and all the footage. And I saw the Zelda uh, Breath of the Wild demo. It's pretty cool. Kind of open world. Not really a fan of that. Um, anyway, if you have any more questions or comments, uh, let me know down below. And I'll, I'll be down there to chat with all of you. Uh, thanks for tuning in. And we'll see you next week.